All right, here we are. Oh, we had some people. Now we have no people. So we'll just wait a little bit. Let me see what's going on here. The people, time to jump in, checking the social medias. A couple of things we're going to talk about today. I got the seven steps. It's actually uh, something that I uh, just did with my six uh, six week transformation called Seven Steps to Success, taking things to the next level. So it's actually the same principles that I'm using for the seven steps for uh, bodybuilding. And then we're going to talk about the change in calories today. I have another video coming up. I did an unboxing video. Of a new scale I just bought off of Amazon called the Renfo ES something something. Cool little body fat measurement scale. So, hey, Steph, long time no see, buddy. We get all that meal prep done today, bud? I just had my third meal feel pretty good. Got one more to go. I think I'm going to make that one a uh, egg white and uh, protein smoothie. Keep the carbs and the fats down on that. I saw you sent me the uh, the pricing for the egg whites. I eh? six ninety nine for two kilos, so we're gonna have to get you to hook me up with some of that. I should have enough for this week. The whole top row of the fridge is uh, filled with egg white cartons, so that's kind of cool overall. And then uh, I got home and Dolly uh, enough <laughs> enough food till Tuesday. Eh? Do you find though, like, because we're taking a lot less calories? I mean, the food lasts a lot longer, man. When you think about it. I got to tell you, right now with uh, the lowering my carbs to 45 grams a day, I think a rice is going to last a long time. had some potatoes today. It was a nice change. Uh, Dolly cooked up a bunch of stuff for me. It's cool, though. I mean, the whole family's getting behind me on this, which is really nice. So I'm pretty pumped about that. So we'll uh, get it going from here. We're going to talk about the seven steps to bodybuilding or the seven steps to beginning bodybuilding. And these are just things that I use um, or I recommend for anyone getting ready to do any type of change, any endeavor overall, right? So um, I don't have any fancy slides onto the computer. This is a live, so I don't have any. Uh, maybe I should have done little cards or something like that. We'll see. So first one I'm going to talk about is consistency. And you know what? It's I think the simplest and the hardest thing uh all at the same time it it is really about consistency we talk about you know talent we talk about gifts and of course genetics all those things make a huge difference right but it's the consistency showing up every day to whatever it is you're working on so in this case we're talking bodybuilding so getting to the workouts um doing the three main workouts it's, it's a little easier because i got the guys showing up right i got uh, steph and eric and a couple of others yeah, you just Phil and I are just having some scheduling problems and stuff like that. Dude, just his house burnt down just before Christmas, so he's got a lot on the go, and uh, um, he was traveling and stuff, so we're going to uh, schedule that for another time for sure. So you're stuck with just me, man. But uh, we'll get him on for sure. And can't wait to pick his brain on, on dieting and getting ready for competition and stuff. So, um, so going back to consistency, and especially that's what we're seeing, right, Steph, with the food prep. Um, the training the three times a week when it's the guys, we look forward to it and we're accountable and no one wants to let the other guys down. So everyone shows up and gets a good workout in and, and that's good. That shows you the value of training partners. And that's consistently happening for us Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 8.30 and Sunday afternoons from 1 to 3, which is great. Um, the other consistent part for me is working that cardio. Uh, 25, 25 minutes a day, I'm alternating between stationary bike and upright bike. Um, pushing that a little harder, you know, pedaling at level seven and eight. When I started this six, eight weeks ago, it was level one. 
So definitely as the legs get stronger and the fitness gets stronger and uh, just the mindset gets stronger and the consistency, you know, getting that. So it's nice getting a good little sweat going and just, you know, it's good. Good blood flow. It helped me heal well. I feel good about that. But again, it's the consistent. So consistently training, consistently um, getting that cardio and consistently um, food prep and and monitoring your, your your calories and stuff. We'll talk a little bit later after I do the seven steps about just what's changed in my food, in my macros after sitting down with uh, – with Pat, who's uh, helping me out with the nutrition side of things, where we got right into the details and figured things out. So uh, that'll make a big difference down the line. We, um, sorry, I just seen if that was a question for uh, the Facebooks and the social medias. Um, so consistency is key, right? You're better off to do the same three steps and do them consistently. You'll get a lot further ahead than being a rock star one day and then kind of mediocre the second day and then skip the third day. And then come back to being a rock star, right? You, you can't make up every second, third day or every second week uh, for inconsistency. You have to be focused on that, inc- that consistency. So we have to really be determined, know the steps that we have to do. And just no matter what, the day doesn't get done until, boom, I don't leave the house until I have the meals with me. I don't leave um, the gym until I got my workout in, whether it's the cardio or the weights. Like I just don't let that happen. And it's necessary because of the goal, right? And again, the size of the goal is super important. Uh, the bigger the goal, the bigger the why, the more you're going to stay focused on it because it's fucking big. It's huge. And that's the thing, right? We're 38, 38 weeks away from November 2nd, first bodybuilding show. Um, i got to be consistent, right? Same with weighing in every day, something I've never done before. We want to weigh in every day to see the average and see what's happening. And there's going to be fluctuations day to day, but weighing in every day, we get to really see what's happening over the week and where things are changing and what's changing uh, as we go through it and, and being focused on that. Right. And just saying, Hey, that's just part of the day. When I get to the gym at one strip down to the skivvies, do my, my way in and then uh, look at that information, write it down and pay attention to it. And every couple of weeks we're going to review it and then make adjustments as we have to. Uh, the next thing that's important, step number two is supervise your activity. So really start to get a handle on, and this, this, this pertains to whether you have a bodybuilding goal, a powerlifting goal, a life goal, a career goal, a, a relationship goal, anything that you're really trying to get better at is supervise your activity. So really do an audit, figure out how are you spending your day? You know, from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, where is your energy being spent? Where's your focus being spent? And then sit back after a day or two of doing that and evaluate what's happening. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that every day we get focused on what our goals and our priorities are uh, and move forward towards our, our progress. But what happens is we get detracted a lot. We, we run into a lot of issues. We have a lot of things that come at us. And we don't realize just how much it influences us. It detracts us, keeps us going. Thanks for the like. Right? So doing an audit, keeping on top of things, um, allows us to sit back and, and, and really look in and say, well, where am I spending my time? And then we'll see patterns emerge and there'll be good patterns. And there'll be bad patterns. Listen, we only have a finite amount of energy every day, a finite amount of focus. Um, especially when we get older. Hey, Jan, how you doing kiddo? Thanks. So oh, that was you to give me a like. That's awesome. I know Steph didn't give me a like that dirty bastard. Um, and sit back and see how we're focusing and what we're doing on. And are we spending the most amount of our energy moving us forward? Are we doing the things that need to get done? Are we taking advantage of our energy and our bandwidth throughout the day to focus on what's important? Or are we using that up and getting sidetracked and, and getting caught in drama, getting caught in things that don't make a big difference, things that don't really matter, right? <clears throat> because things are going to come at us all day long. We need to control how we're spending that time. Right. One of the things I, I, I try to work on a lot now is I have, you know, every day I start, you know, with the uh, my journaling and <clears throat> focus on my mindset, what I want to think and where I want my mind to be for the day. But I pick one to three things that have to get done today. And I work really hard to get those three things done, get them done as early as possible, because they're usually critical things that are going to move everything in blocks to the next level, whether it's business, whether it's personal, whether it's training, whether it's nutrition. You know, when I got up this morning, we had a specialty class going on at the gym. I wanted to be there for that. And then as soon as I was done, I had to run out to um, the grocery store, pick up a bunch of egg whites. I found a place that had more egg whites at a better price. And I wanted to get all that done and cook my first meal and come back in time to train at 1 o'clock with my training partners. So when I got up in the morning, I wrote those three things out. These three things had to happen. 
and they got done because they were priorities and they made a big difference. So now I had a great workout. Number two, I was able to be there at the gym when I needed to for a new class. And I'm stocked up on egg whites so that, you know, my nutrition can stay online. So again, right, we got to prioritize. We got to look at how we're spending my day. And then the afternoon was open. So I chilled a little bit, watched a movie with my wife, took a little bit of a nap. But then I knew in the evening I had to get ready for a couple of videos. I do my uh, six-week transformation challenge that we're doing. I do that at 8, and I'm doing this video at 10. So I wanted to prepare some notes, have some stuff to talk about, make sure that I've got, you know, some focus for this as well, right? But the day I'm, I'm strategizing the day, I'm making sure that I'm also, you know, spending a little bit of time to deload because it is a Sunday overall. So tomorrow morning when I get up, I know what I have to get done on what I have to be on top of for Monday at the gym and at business and stuff. And I make sure I get all those things done so that when I get there, I hit the stride and I'm moving forward. Right. So supervising my activity. Am I spending too much time on things that aren't as important? Am I spending enough time on things that are important? We won't know until we sit and look at these things. So a really cool tool. Keep it, keep your journal with you and every hour that you're up, write what you're doing. Right. A couple notes and stuff. And then look it over over a couple of days and let's see where we're really spending time, where we're getting the most out of our time and where we're wasting our time. Guys, our most valuable asset is time because we never get it back. There's only so much. And every day we have less and less and less. So we really have to guard that, right? That's the most valuable thing. It's not money. It's not wealth. It's none of that stuff. It's time, right? You know, they say when you're young, you spend all your time trying to create wealth. And then when you get older, you spend all your wealth trying to create more time, right? So I think that's a really cool kill quote. Um, number three is look at limiting your distractions, right? What is pulling you off course? What is causing you to, to derail, to, to, to lose focus? And I mean, I'm talking about things like TV. I'm talking about things like social media. I mean, social media is good within reason, right? TV can be nice within reason. So at the end of the day, though, right, we need to limit those distractions. Hey, you know, January went a whole month without TV, unless I was doing something on YouTube and I was casting it on the TV, right? the whole month. But you know what? That month I got a lot more done. I got a little more productivity. I caught up on a bunch of things that were really, really important that I was behind on. So it was really cool. And all I did was just make a couple switches, right? So that was really cool. Um, and even our social habits, you know, how, where are we hanging out after work? Where are we hanging out? Where are we hanging? Who are we hanging out with at work? Are we getting stuff done? Are we wasting time? So we're, our work's not getting done. So then we got to work longer hours. Are we hanging out? Are we still in the dart league, even though we don't like doing it anymore? But, you know, we're so used to a Tuesday night. That's what's up. And is that does that align with our current goals and things that we want to do? If you're trying to lose weight and get fit, I'll tell you right now, hanging out in the bar one or two nights a week isn't going to help you. I don't care how cool you are. You're going to have a hard time staying on task and staying, you know, um, on top of your nutrition and that kind of thing because you're all, it's all around you. Plus, you got the pressure of your buddies. You know, hey, come on. You know, you can do one. You can have one. Right. So is that fitting? Does that work with your overall uh, purpose that you're trying to achieve? Right. Are you spending enough time in the gym? Are you spending too much time in the gym? Right. When you get to the gym, you know, hey, how are you? A little bit of socializing. But then you got to get down to business and then hang out for a few minutes afterwards, socialize. But then you got to get out of there. Right. When you're 20 some years old, you can spend four hours in the gym because it's part of your social network and what you're doing and that kind of thing. But when you're in your 40s and 50s and older, we have families and responsibilities and careers and jobs and businesses, we can't hang out there all. So we need to move around where we're hanging out. So again, where are we spending our time overall? Um, number four, self-care as a priority. Taking care of ourselves as a priority it has to become job number one, right? If we're not getting healthier, we're not going to benefit ourselves and those people that rely on us. So we're not going to move forward our goals and our, we're not going to have uh, progress and we're not going to have purpose and we're not going to be very happy. We're not going to be content. We're not going to be fulfilled. We're going to be miserable. And then when we're in a miserable state, we're going to be seeking things out to make us feel better instantly for a little bit. Food, drugs, a booze, sex, TV, anything to make us immediately feel better about ourselves or take our minds off ourselves because we're not happy where we are. So that self-care is really, really important. And for me, there's three main steps that have to happen is exercise is number one. Food is number two, right? How we eat, what we're eating, staying, you know, providing good fuel for the body. And number three, we'll come back to it over and over again. And a lot of times I talk about things is that journal and that mindset. These three areas are the ones that set us up for success. They're the ones that alter what we think about. They're the ones that make us feel better physically. They're the ones that make us feel better mentally. And when we feel strong inside and out, we're more capable. We can handle more. We can do more, right? We want to move forward and sleep. Well, yeah, sleep. That's part of self-care, right? Getting rest, 
recovery, right? That's super, super important overall. If we don't take care of these things, right? And if we're not eating well and we're not exercising well, we're going to have trouble with things like sleep, right? Because our, our system's all over the place, right? If we're not hitting good workouts and getting some of the stress of life and the day out of our system, you know what? We're going to toss and turn more at night because we didn't get it out. It's pent up inside us, right? There's a way to, to exercise. There's a way to eat. There's a way to sleep. But they're all tied into each other, right? Getting up in the morning, spending a few minutes, getting ready for your day, but sit down for 10 minutes, pull out your journal and just write a few things, where you want to do today, how you want to feel, how you're feeling, you know, and get those thoughts in your brain that you want to have moving forward. Because if you don't put the right thoughts in, if you don't create those right scripts, you don't put that positivity into your brain first thing in the morning, what's going to happen is something's going to fill that space. It's going to be the guy to cut you off on the way to work. It's going to be the fact, the, cat, the, the fact the cat took a crap on the kitchen floor when you're trying to get ready. Something else is going to jump in there, and that's going to be the thought that we're festering on. It's in the back of our mind. Or your, yeah, or your husband has a man call. That's right. right. So what we need to do is we need to get up earlier and spend 10 minutes and just program our mind the way we want it to be, with the thoughts we want it to have, so that as we move forward, Right, we're not at the whim of what's happening to us, what's being thrown at us. It's the other way around. We know we're per we have purpose. We're determined. We're walking straight through that wind, straight through that snowstorm. We're moving till we get to where our target, where we want to be. Right, that's part of the self care. That really, really has to happen. Uh, and that leads me into step number five: wake up earlier. Right, set the alarm for 15 minutes early. It's not going to kill you. You know what? If, if it's tough, go to bed half an hour early the night before. Right. No one achieves a lot by going to bed or later, but everyone achieves a lot more by getting up earlier. It's that simple. Right. If you're getting up at six and you're rushed. Right. Get up at six at five thirty. And, and, you know, get rid of some of the rush. Look at your activity level. What are things that you're doing in the morning? That maybe you could do at night. What are things you're dealing with that, you know, are, are slowing you down in the morning? So find a way to rectify them. But if you leave it to the last minute and you have to deal with the chaos in the morning, you're not going to get a lot done. And then, in fact, that sets your mood for the day and stresses you out, right? So get up a little bit earlier. Get up before the house does. Spend 10 minutes just breathing. Spend a few minutes just thinking. Write down a few things. Start with those small exercises. 10 minutes of me time before you start your day. It'll make a huge difference overall. It sets the stage for the type of data you want to have. Um, let me see. That was number five. Wake up a little bit earlier. Uh, number six. You know, having a weekly check-in, a meeting, some accountability, be part of something positive that you're involved in weekly that's going to help reset your thinking, that's going to put you in the right frame of mind, that's going to put you with like and similar people doing the same thing with common goals, so you'll thrive off that, you'll benefit from that. What it does is it gives you that top of mind, front of mind of what you're trying to do. So we do the um, well, my six-week challenge right now. We're doing the, the video call that I do with them every Sunday night. And then Monday nights at 7, we weigh in, we meet, and we talk about this, a couple topics, talk about the week they had, what, what's moving forward, a little challenge, get them going and stuff. For a lot of you guys that have been following the um, the live stream that I do, some of you are on live, some of you watch it later on when you know after it's recorded. Um, that's another way of just staying front of mind, staying, you know, helping with your focus, your accountability, giving you something to, to, to follow to help you achieve more of what you want to do, right? But what it does, it just keeps your goals and objectives clear and reminds you of them on a regular basis, right? On a regular basis. Six months goes by really quick, and next thing you know, you have another dentist appointment, right? Oh, I didn't floss as much as I should. I didn't brush as much as I should. Why? Because it's six months. It's out of sight. It's out of mind, right? So at the end of the day, right, having some weekly check-in accountability, part of a group like that makes a big difference. A lot of us going to the gym, right, we go three, four times a week. That's kind of our check-in. That's kind of our thing. We're meeting up with the same people. We have training partners. That's part of it. That makes a big difference, right? Keeps you on target. Keeps you part of the flow and what's happening. Number seven, and probably my favorite one, the kind of hokey at first, and I think if you learn to adapt it and work with it, it's actually quite powerful, is when you get to a situation where you're struggling, right, whether it's your consistency, whether it's your food prep, whether it's staying focused on your goal, right, something life threw at you, work threw at you, your job, your business, family, kids, the man cold, something that's cool to do is have um, what we call what would your hero do. So someone you look up to, they can be fictional, they can be non-fictional, they can be someone you know, they can be someone doing the thing that you want to do in life, right? What would they do? What would Jesus do? What would Elvis do? Right. 
And then think about that. And then look at that as a way to guide you through a situation. You know, if we turn around um, and, and we don't have someone, you know, we all have heroes. So, you know, as kids, we had superheroes. As, as adults, we have sport heroes and things like that, right? But why not have heroes in the different areas of your life that you're trying to prove? So why not have, you know, a relationship hero? Is that someone you know that, you know, you look at them and then you know they have a great marriage or they have a great partnership or they have a great um relationship with their children or they have a you know what I mean there's someone like that around us well what would they do what do they do study them see what they're up to how do they do that because none of this stuff happens by accident right how do they handle things learn from that and then use that for motivation use that for inspiration use that for ideas success leaves clues successful people have patterns they leave clues right you can study them and you can replicate them even if you don't quite understand them right and you'll get results from it right? Get up early. Successful, most successful people get up early. You know, whether it's five in the morning or at nine in the morning, I get up usually around eight. Is my I don't show up at the gym till one, but I get up at eight and I have a ritual that I do. So that's my morning. And if I struggle and I have a big day, I had a couple of big meetings last week, important meetings, exciting meetings. It's getting up at seven because I had to get a little more stuff organized. I had to be sure. I want to make sure I was on the ball, right? So again, that's part of success. That's part of doing what has to get done on a regular basis. Is there someone that, you know, you can look up to at work, someone you can look up to in business, right? Someone that's in your trade that you do that does it really well. And fuck, I wish I was more like that guy or that girl, right? Use them as a, as a mentor. Get to know them, right? Take them out for coffee. Pick their brain. Most people that receive good success are usually more than happy to share as long as they feel they're not wasting their time with you, right? That's super important. I have all kinds of time for people that want real help. What I don't have time for is when it's a third conversation about the same thing right? But now you're wasting my time because you're wasting your time. And there's a lot of people out there that want help that will do the work and really appreciate the help and take that help and do good things with it. Well, those were, that's where I want to spend my time, right? That's where the best, I get the satisfaction of helping people. That's, that's part of what fulfills me, right? But at the end of the day, we all have someone that we, we can or should look up to or look to for inspiration or for ideas of what to do. So, you know, I'm 50 years old, Schwarzenegger, Arnold, Obviously, one of my big idols overall, um, just what he did in life, you know, where he came from, what he's achieved. If he can do it, why can't I do it? Why can't I do it? Because there's certain things that he was willing to do and, he, you know, that kind of stuff that I wasn't willing to do at the time, right? So at the end of the day, if one person can do something, other people can do it. It's are you willing to do what it takes? Are you willing to be consistent? Are you willing to be determined? Are you willing to do what it matters, no matter if it's comfortable or uncomfortable? Because often or not, the stuff that's uncomfortable, that's unpleasant, is the stuff that has to be done, and it's the stuff that's going to move us forward, right? Eating clean, not pleasant. But the results, very pleasant. And then we have to wait until we get that switch around it, right? Who in health can you follow? Who out there in health is doing what you want to do? Right. For you ladies out there, who's living that life? You know, yeah, we look at the Instagram and we see all the cool pics and stuff like that. But try to get to know one of those people a little bit more, get more of their story, you know, be around them. But is there somebody in your gym, you know, that's done really well, that's that's got kids, that's married, but they've lost a lot of weight and they've changed their life and stuff like that. Get to know them. Figure out what they're doing. Watch them. Thanks for the like, whoever that I was. Right. Get to know what they're up to. Right. Watch how they do it. It leaves clues. And it's guys, I'll tell you right now, rarely is it difficult is, is it I was gonna say difficult. Whether rarely is it complicated. Hey Joseph, what's up, brother? But it can be difficult, right? It there are clues out there. They're doing it. They're showing how they're doing it. just by them doing, it, right? They're going about their business, just doing it. Watch them. Watch the people that show up to a gym and do a warm-up. Right? They do the warm-up whether you're talking to them or not, whether you're helping them or not, right? whether you're part of the workout, and then they go about and they hit their workout. Right? They're the ones that are showing up four times a week. Right? They're the ones that are working hard. Look in your gym. Who's sweating? Who's huffing and puffing? Who's pushing themselves? They're the ones getting the results. Right? So if you want to make change, you have to do the same thing. You have to get there. You have to put yourself through it. It's not easy. It's difficult. It's uncomfortable. But it's not complicated and it's not hard to do. We've talked about this before, guys. There's more knowledge available now than ever at the fingertips. Type in on Google, you know, question, how to do this. To go on to YouTube, how to do this. There's a video on it. I guarantee you there's probably 100 videos on it. Watch it. Watch it over and over again. Learn from it, right? And then take action. It comes down to the taking action part, right? That's, that's on us.
That's what we have to do. We have to do it consistently, right? Same with business or work. There's someone out there that's doing your job at a higher level, right? So much so that they're your superior now, right? Sometimes, or they moved on or they're in a different department, right? But they did it a certain way. And, I, you know, we can always sit there and blame, and they, you know, their suck-ups and their brown noses. You know what, guys? There's not as much of that as we like to think. At the end of the day, people put the fucking work in. They worked hard. They got things done. They didn't accept excuses. They went above and beyond. In fact, a lot of times people get a job, right, after they've been doing that job ahead of time, after they've been doing it for a while, right? They, they, get, they do the job before they get the job, right? They take on the extra responsibility. They want to learn. They want to, turn the, to learn that task. They want to do it. They want to improve. They want to improve themselves. They want to do a better job. They want to get better. But you know what happens when you do that? Next thing you know, you get the job, right? Or someone else sees it, and then they offer you the job somewhere else, right? But you got to get there. That's right, Jan. Passion, drive, hard work, and dedication, right? And I throw in there consistency. Those are all super important. And wrap that up in consistency, you win. You make the changes, right? At the end of the day, right, we know what we should do. We know what we want to do. We need to put ourselves in that position that we're going to do it, that we force ourselves to do it, that we accept no excuses. We create a standard for ourselves much higher than the standards we used to have for ourselves. What got us here isn't going to get us there. It doesn't matter what it's all about, what the focus is, right? It can be done, right? Surround yourself with people getting stuff done, right? Hang out with people. Watch videos about people getting stuff done. Guys, I, I do a lot of these videos because it keeps me accountable. Because I'm putting myself out there, right? I want to inspire. I want to motivate. But I also want to hold myself to a higher standard. So I put myself out there so I can't back down. I don't want to turn around and go, hey, what happened to your bodybuilding? But, you know, thing you're going to do, you know, you, you do it for a month and then you stop. I don't want that, right? I want to keep going. And I want to say, yeah, I did it. Look, check it out. Boom, this is how far I got. I got further than I thought. I got as far as I, you know, I got further than I thought. I got, didn't get quite as far. It doesn't matter. Is that I have a goal. I have a line in the sand, and I'm going to go after it. But I'm using things like this to keep me on track, to keep me on target overall. So those are the seven steps, guys, that we talked about. We'll re review them real quick. One is consistency. Two is supervise your activity. Uh, three is limit your distractions. Four, self-care priority number one. Uh, five, wake up a bit earlier. Six, weekly check-ins. Be a part of a group or something that's going to keep you accountable. And number seven, what would your hero do? And I really like that last one. I really like the way it sums it up. What would your hero do, right? How would Arnold Schwarzenegger handle the situation, right? How would anyone that you follow, you know, how would they ha how would they handle it? I have friends that have businesses, different businesses than this, and they're at a higher level than I am. I look to them. What are they doing? How are they handling? It? How do they spend their money? Sometimes I'll message them. Hey, listen, guys, I know you're really busy, but you know, I'm 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 kind of stuck here. What would you do, right? And they're happy to help because they know that the help is going to be appreciated and as much as possible put into use. So at the end of the day, right, who's the hero? I think the really cool part is, and I said it before, become the hero in your own movie. I was this, I got tired of it, this happened to me, and then I went on a journey to become better, right? That's the epic storytelling, right? Something happened, we meet the hero, there's a tragedy or there's a test or a challenge, and then there's the learning, there's the preparing, and then there's the final battle or the final facing or, you know, that kind of thing. That's the structure of all great stories. But let's do that for ourselves. Let's be the hero in our own story. Let's be so damn proud of ourselves, right? That's the magic. I think that's the power. If we can do that, if we can go to bed every night going, hey, hey, Hoss, you did a good job today. Keep that shit up. Hey, Hoss, you know what? Today, not your best day. Let's focus a little bit more. Be honest with yourself, right? For me, I call myself Haas. That's my alter ego for myself, right? Haas, come on, man. Pick your shit up. Haas, good job, good focus, good conversation. Hey, Haas, let's go. You got to get this done. Find a way to tap in to that identity and push yourself. Hold yourself up to a higher level overall. So those are the seven steps I got there, guys. Um, like I said, I, I, I really like them. I think they can be applied to anything that we're doing. Uh, I said bodybuilding because it's a bodybuilding goal. So let's break it down. Consistency. Consistency for me would be in training. Consistency would be in eating, right? Supervise my activity, right? Am I making sure that I'm staying on top of things? Am I getting the food prep in? Am I getting my workouts in? Am I getting the rest of the work I have to do done on time, right? So allow me to keep the training. 
right? Limited distractions. When I get to the gym and it's time for a workout, hop on that bike, pedal, get in the gym, warm up, do my thing. It's my gym. It's my business. I'll talk to a lot of members, but you know what? Focus on that. Focus on the job at hand. Talk to them after. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm busy doing this. Can I see? Can I talk to you in half an hour? Can I talk to you in an hour? How about tomorrow morning we sit down, right? Um, Self-care, obviously, right? You're in for bodybuilding, eating better, food prep, mindset, right? Learning the skills and new things that I have to do for this new goal. Um, wake up earlier, right? As far as me with the bodybuilding, that means make sure I'm up early enough to get on top of everything, to stay on top of food prep, to stay on, pre on top of prep, to have to deal with the tired. You know, calories are going to get a little lower. I'm going to deal with a little bit of fatigue, sleep a little bit more, right? Go to bed earlier, but get up so we get stuff done. Right. The weekly check ins for me, this, the live stream, the progress, that progress. I like. So on Instagram, I do that cable crossover, most muscular. That's that's my weekly snapshot. That's my weekly progress pick that I like to do. I like the pose. Right. I like how it shows some basic definition and it shows what's happening. But that's what I'm doing every Sunday to really just make sure that I can see from week to week to week the progress. Now, from one week to five weeks, yes, there's some changes. But from one week to 20 weeks, you know, one week to 30 weeks. It's going to be huge, the differences that we're going to see, right? So that's part of my progress. That's what I'm doing. That's part of my weekly check-in, right? Doing this webcast, this, this live stream, part of my weekly check-in. Part of me making sure that I'm on top of it and I'm reminding myself every week what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, right? And seven, what did my hero do? What did my hero in bodybuilding do? Well, they wouldn't miss a workout. They would stay focused. They would nail their, their nutrition. They wouldn't let get things in the way. They would be determined. They would do the things that have to get done whether no one's watching them or not. Right. That's the seven steps. I can turn around and do the same thing for business. Right. Break it down. I can do the same thing for my career. I can do this uh, for your career. You can do the same thing for a relationship. You can break these things down in these seven steps and apply them to whatever it is you want, because these are universal rules that make a big difference that set that that set the groundwork for success. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you're not going to struggle. But if you have this to follow, if you have a template to follow. Right. Then you're going to move forward. You have a system, right? You're going to be able to get progress. You're going to get through a lot of things because you're sticking to your guns. You're staying focused. Super important overall. Um, what else? So there's that. That was really cool. This week in training, really good training. More on cardio. Uh, Friday night, sat down and got really dialed in with the calories looking forward. So I, I was saying earlier, I'm going to put a video up tomorrow called the unboxing of the Renfo body weight scale. So I needed a body weight scale that measures body fat and, and the body weight. And um, someone had put me on to, uh, there's one on Amazon for 40 bucks, a Renfo scale. Actually, works with an app on your phone. Uh, where's the app here? This is it here, right? Let me see that. So that's the app. So every time I weigh in with Bluetooth, it actually sends the information to my phone, tracks the progress and whatnot. Um, and that was important because, first off, I had, I had an idea where my body fat was. This is a bioimpedance scale, so it sends a current through the body, measures the resistance and time, and determines with your body weight and things like that. Uh, you type in your height and things, so it has factors to work with. Fairly accurate. Not going to be as accurate as hydrostatic weighing and stuff like that, but what's important is what we're going to be looking for really is the change. So in my when I was working with these calorie and macro um, – calculations earlier in the week i was sitting down with uh, my buddy pat uh we had to figure out our bmr we had to figure out our activity level how many calories would that be then figure out where we are where we want to be what the deficit would be and then you know how many weeks do we want to get to the goal and then that would tell us what kind of deficit we need daily to achieve that but to do that i had to have some more uh, some accuracy i had to know my body fat i had to know my body weight so i knew my body weight because i have an old balance scale but I was kind of guesstimating my body fat. Now, I'd said I was probably around 30% body fat at the time after I'd lost uh, about the 45 pounds since December 15th. Uh, jumped on the scale. Turns out I was at 30.7. So pretty pretty close, right? Um, but my goal is 10%. And 10% within 39 weeks. So with that information, uh, we did some factoring. We, you know, here's what, I, here's what I need to eat as a base. But here's what I need to drop every day calorie deficit-wise to go from 30.7% body fat down to 10% body fat in 38 weeks. 10% um, body fat, you're going to have abs. My first bodybuilding show, I'm realistic in the way that, A, I've never had abs before. I've never been that lean. Um, you know, 3 to 5% probably to win a bodybuilding show. I'm looking at doing the Ottawa, so fairly competitive. 
but for me, really, it's about getting to this first show. So if I get to 10% and having never been there before and I have abs, you know, that's huge for me. And then at that point, I can decide if I want to go further and then detail things that way. So based on that and where I'm at, we figured I have 38 weeks. We plugged it in so we can get there in 32 weeks. And the reason why we made it 32 weeks is it gives me six weeks leeway. It gives me six weeks in case something happens. It gives me six weeks in case things go really well or don't go well enough, right? Because we're kind of projecting. And I've never done this kind of weight loss before. So, you know, uh, we plan for the best, but we have to be ready sometimes for things to go off offline. So we're giving ourselves that six weeks. And if that works really well and I'm six weeks out, I can look at dialing in. Maybe then I can come in at 9% or 8%. Who knows? We'll worry about that as we move further. So what we figured out was my base calorie is around 3,900 calories. To get where I want to go in 32 weeks to get to 10%, I have to drop that pretty radically uh, to the point where I'm down to 1,905 calories a day. Now, that can be a lot of calories. Uh, it could feel like a lot less. Because I spent the last six and a half weeks or so already cutting back on calories and eating cleaner, losing that first 40-some pounds, um, it's not as drastic, right? But at the same token, when we figured out our macros, that's where things are getting a little dicey for me for what I want to do. Uh, I'm about 400 grams of protein a day, 45 grams of carbs, and only 15 grams of fat. So we're trying to, it's a, it's a pretty aggressive deficit to the point where um, I can lose about five, five and a half pounds a week. Uh, because, I mean, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm 300 and, well, this scale is a little more accurate, so 360. I want to get down to probably about 240 is where we guesstimate that will be around the 10%. Um, so to drop that 120 pounds and drop that 20.7% body fat, that's what those numbers, that's what that deficit came into. And what we do is we figure out the protein needs first and then what's left, we split between fat and carbs. So is it aggressive? Yes. Am I starving? If I miss a, if I'm gappy between a meal, I find it a little bit tough. It is a drop in calories. It's, it's almost, it's half, right? It's half the calories I had been taking with this new schedule. Um, so a challenge, the challenge was actually, then I, I sat down and I created four meals with Pat and I said, okay, well, what would these meals look like? I need to have a visual. I need to know if I was going to eat chicken, what would that look like? Right. What would I have with it? How much rice would that be with it? Uh, no more beef. That's out the window. Way too much fat. Like I said, trying to keep it around 15 grams of fat. Um, you know, you're not even getting six ounces of steak for that. So that's out, uh, no whole eggs. So really we're looking at, uh, tuna, um, chicken breast chicken thighs uh egg whites so i've never really got into egg whites before um so pat was telling me hey egg whites what's nice about egg whites is that they're fluffy they're moist whereas tuna gets pretty dry tuna and rice you know doesn't get much more drier than that um so we said go try egg whites because you're going to get some moisture and you get some density and you're going to get filling so we figured out that 500 milliliters of egg whites gives me about 40 grams of protein so with four meals um, I'm splitting it, my, my protein into four. So that's about a hundred grams of protein per meal. Uh, my first three meals will have 15 grams of carbs, which is like a third a cup of rice or a third a cup of potato. That's, uh, that's not a lot. That's not a lot for sure. And the fats, there's enough fats naturally occurring in my one chicken meal that my fats are taken care of. So what we figured out is we're going to a 500 mil of uh, egg white. That does two things. A, that's about 48 grams of protein. But what's nice is it fills the plate. I posted some photos online this week on Facebook. It's a nice amount of food on the plate, nice volume of food on the plate, and it's moist if you cook it fresh. You know, if it's cooked uh, heated, you cook it up fresh. Um, so it's nice. It's a nice texture. I'm really enjoying that. Uh, and simple, right? So I went and bought some 250 mils, and I found a store that has the uh, one liter, so I just pour two cups. Of, uh, of that into a frying pan, turn it on high, stir it till it's all white and all cooked, pull it off. It's actually pretty simple. Um, and then a third of a cup of rice or a third of a cup of potatoes. A little bit, I'm using a little bit of green beans, string beans, just for some fiber and a little bit of nutrient that way. And uh, done. If I don't have rice, I've got some rice cakes. Uh, one rice cake is eight grams, so two of those. Uh, just give some crunch and change it up a bit. You know, I know someone was posting earlier today when I posted, I said, oh, rice cakes has a high glycemic index. It does. But at the end of the day, as long as I keep my total carbs around the 45 mark per day, how I take them in isn't that big a deal. I just like the rice cake once in a while for the change in consistency. Um, but overall, it's rice or potato. 
And I have a lot of body fat to lose. So switching that over, we're going to burn a lot of body fat. So the fuel is going to be really good. It's just going to take, you know, a day or two for that real fat burning to switch over. I know today in the bench workout, as I was warming up, I kind of bonked a little bit. And, uh, but once I was warmed up and got in the flow, it worked really well, you know, but, you know, so that was nice. And it's going to take the first week or two, it's going to take some getting used to, but I'll tell you since Friday, adjusting these things and weighing myself in Sunday morning, uh, down three and a half pounds. So it, it's, it's fast. It's happening. Right. I ran into some hunger issues last night because my last, one of my meals was at around three or four. Then I was out with the kids hockey and stuff like that. So I didn't get home till about 10 30. So at that point I was starving. Uh, you have to like what you're eating. It makes a big difference. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, right. Um, that's the challenge. What can I eat that I like, but that fits within the macros. Now, if I was leaner overall, if I didn't have the 110, 115 pounds, to lose, let's say I had 30 pounds to lose and I had 30, 38 weeks to do it. Well, obviously my calorie intake would be higher, right? I would be at the 25, 26, 2700 calories. I would be able to have more carbs. I would have more options, but I'm in a state where I've got a lot of ground to make up or lose in, in this case that I don't have the benefit of some of those those selections and those choices. This is, you know, the nitty gritty. This is the, hey, fat bastard, do you want to go from, you know, 355 plus pounds down to 240 to 10% body fat? Uh, you're going to have to make some hard changes that you should have made subtly over the last couple of years, right? So paying a little bit for the sins. But I'm okay with it because I'm determined and I'm excited and I'm motivated to do this. So I'll live with the egg whites. Frank's, I'm sure Frank's hot sauce is going to come to the rescue. I'll live with the tuna or the salmon once in a while, that kind of thing, right? The rice, it, you know, that's where it gets a little dry. Tuna and rice, you drink a lot of water. Uh, so again, going back to those egg whites, that gives me about 50 grams of protein. I have to get another 50 and I got to keep the carbs low. So I'm using two scoops of, uh, of our whey protein, which gives me another 50 grams of protein and barely a carb and a half, a uh, gram and a half of carb. And I mix it with water. So I eat the egg whites, a little bit of string bean, a little bit of carbs. I drink the two, pro the two scoops of protein shake. So at the end of the day, you know, what's important for me is I know what those meals look like. So I've had my three meals today. I have a fourth one coming. That fourth one doesn't get any carbs, right? Because I have to keep it under 45. So it's going to be another 500 mil of uh, egg white. And it's going to be two scoops of uh, whey protein in water. And I'm going to eat that. It's 1045 now. I'm going to, you know, when I'm done this show, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to pound it out. It's that simple, right? For me, knowing what the meals are, uh, keeping it simple is really, really important for me, right? Tonight, my wife made some chicken thighs for me. So that's going to be one of my meals of the four. So basically, I'm going to do what I'm planning on is an egg white, uh, a tuna meal, a chicken meal, an egg white. I like that because it's all simple. It's all easy to go, right? When cans of tuna are on sale, just big. Fucking our grocery bills going pretty cheap overall because it is 1,900 calories, right? Egg whites are uh, aren't too bad. I'm finding uh, different prices on things, um, but for me, having it, mix it in spinach. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to get a little creative. I'm sure with the egg whites down the line. Right now, I just want to get simple. I want to keep it basic. Walmart has tuna on sale. I was there last night and I picked up some egg whites there, but they didn't. They only had the 250s. And then this morning I went to Great Canadian Grocery Store and they had the one liters on for five bucks. But then Steph was over at Costco today and they have the two kilo egg whites for six ninety nine. So next week when he goes, he's going to pick me up a bunch. But for me, keeping those meals very simple for now, easy to measure is what's really important. Don't be afraid to add a whole egg or two in my egg whites. Yeah, I, I know, Steph, but I got to watch the, uh, the overall fat, right? So as soon as I add a whole egg in there. You know, I'm adding another six grams of fat because you know, I got to keep my fats under 15. I got to be a little careful. Here's the other thing, too, guys. If the weight loss is very aggressive, right, and meaning it works really well, every two weeks we're going to sit down and look at the numbers. So if I start to lose really quickly, right, there'll be times where we'll be able to adjust up a bit more. And I might, you know, that might mean an extra two, 300 calories a day, an extra 10 grams of fat, an extra 20 grams of carbs. I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, if not, I'm prepared just to bite my lip and do this all the way through. Um, but that's the only thing we're going to do with Pat is that every two weeks we're actually going to sit down. Where am I at? What are the readings at? If there's big changes, readjust the numbers, right? So this way we're always in that right zone overall. So, you know, we're going to get things done. I've got a good team behind me. I got my training partner, Steph and the guys, I got Pat looking out for me on the nutrition side. Like that's, that's, you know, and again, right. These guys are willing to help because they're seeing me do the work and I want to do the work and, and, you know, Steph's competing with me and then Pat, he's competing in June. 
And even he's like, you know, looking at some of these new things that we're figuring out, he's like, oh, I'm dialing some of that stuff in too. So, right, it's contagious. Everyone wants to get there. It's exciting. And people are doing stuff that they want to do and someone else is doing it. So they're motivated. So it's really cool. So all that being said, uh, like I said, the other last night, I got, uh, it was a big gap between my meals. I was pretty hungry. When I was in Walmart, I was like walking by the bags of chips. I bought some for the kids, but I'm like, my stomach was gurgling and stuff. And then when I found the egg whites, I felt a little bit better. I found the things I needed, you know, and what's really cool about the egg whites. So we have a really good no stick frying pan, um, you know, turn it on, put this put it on the stove, turn it on full blast, pour the 500 mils in, turn around. Once it starts cooking, stir it till it's done, drop it in a plate and eat. And it was pressed, those really cool stir fry pans just wash right clean. So you're ready to go. So really, right, it's meal prep is simple. It's fast. I can prepare a couple of meals on the go real quick. Um, it's good. So if I have my egg whites before I leave in the morning, you know, at work, and I have them again as my last meal, then really all I got to bring to work with me is uh, one meal with chicken, one meal with tuna and some rice, right? And I have the protein shakes there. So it's really, really simple. And to me, that's what I'm really excited about, keeping it simple so that I can stay on track. And it's easy for me to maintain. I'll get a little creative once I get really comfortable with it. Right now, I want to weigh things. I just ordered another food scale. Um, again, with the egg whites, it's easy to measure. And a can of tuna, it's easy to measure. It's more when I get into the chicken. I want to make sure that is the six ounces or seven ounces, whatever it's supposed to be. I want to weigh those things. I have a third of a cup measuring cup just for the rice. Fill it level. Drop it in. Right? I want to make it a no-brainer. I want to make it idiot-proof. Right? So this idiot, when he's hungry, right? Isn't like, oh, that looks like a third of a cup, and it's really, you know, a cup and a half and stuff, right? I want to take the emotion out of it. I want to take the, um, the, uh, the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the ignorance out of it. I just want to make it simple, right? Just do this, 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 this. Look at the results. Adjust accordingly, right? And I got to tell you, it's kind of cool just to know what you got to eat. It's kind of cool to know what, you know, you know where you're going, what you're doing. It kind of takes that, that, that thing off the... Those decisions out of the out of the day, right? You don't have to worry about it. Certain Ziploc containers have sizes on them. Ah, beautiful, awesome. See, these are little things, right, Janet, that we learn as we get into things. We probably walked by those Ziploc containers a thousand times before until you decided it was time to make changes and you had to look at your food and you had to figure out measurements. Now all of a sudden you're like, oh, what a great idea, right? At the end of the day, I I don't know what you know. I didn't even know where the egg whites were in a grocery store. I mean, I kind of figured be near the eggs, but I wasn't sure because I never bought them. Now I can go in any grocery store and I'm like, yeah, they'll be right there, right? How do we get some measuring cups? I'm like, well, where's that in the kitchen area in the, in Walmart? But you know, you, you get to know these things overall, right? Uh, I am I am pounding a lot of diet pop as I always do. That's the one thing I'm going to hang on to just because it gives me a little bit of comfort, it gives me that fizzle, that fizz, that, that little bit of taste. But down the line, I'm sure I'm going to work on getting rid of that. I'm drinking a lot more water just because I'm taking the four smoothies a day. So there's more water coming in that way. So a lot of little things are happening overall, and I'm excited to weigh in every day. I'm excited to get to that weigh-in when I get to the gym at 1 p.m. to see what's happening. Am I on track? Is it happening? And like I said before, part of me wants to sit back as I'm doing all these things, and I want to sit back and just take it all in and just you know enjoy that ride. And, and where, where is it taking me, right? That's the part that I think is really, really cool. Um, you know, let's see where things go. You know, let's ride this out. Sorry, I was just checking some social medias, guys, and stuff like that, making sure I'm not missing any questions. Uh, Kurt, you're awfully sexy. I'm like, okay, that was weird. I gotta be honest, I made that one up. Um, so at the end of the day, right? I, I really want to. I want to take it all in. I want to take out. I want to take in this experience. I want to feel it. I want to really own it, so that when I come out on the other side of it, I get the most out of it, right? I know I'm determined and I know I'm going to work really hard and I know it's going to be amazing when I get to the other side. But from here to November, right, there's going to be a lot of things coming at me. Even my wife said the other night, she was last night, she was, you know, so what is that? You know, we're not going to be going to dinner for the next 38 weeks. I'm like, we'll go to dinner, right? That kind of thing. But I'm going to have a salad, right? That kind of thing with there's very little on it. And I'll have eaten before and after. And the one thing Pat said, hey, if you know a social thing is coming up, you know, Cut back a little bit on the calories throughout the day and then get them in, you know, you know, with that other meal, that bigger meal and stuff. So at the end of the day, that's the other thing, too. And, Steph, you spoke about this, too. There is no cheat meals. There is no cheat nights. This is moving forward. Have to try. Have I tried the Soda Stream, Janet? No, I haven't. Uh, a lot of people have talked to me about it. 
do you have one? Do you use it? While you answer that, I'm going to open up this fresh lime Pepsi, right? That kind of thing. A little bit of taste, a little bit of variety. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. No, you don't drink pop? So you've always just drank water? I have a hard time with just plain water. I find plain water has such a nothing taste to it that I've always felt that way ever since I was a kid that I just hate it. I just hate it. I feel like I fail when I just drink water. So um, I'm, I'm working with it. But again, right, just the fact that now I mix up two scoops of chocolate protein four times a day to get to make sure I get my proteins in without the carbs, uh, I mix it with a lot of water, so I'm getting a lot of water in. So, and again, good for the muscles, good for the glycogen storage and that kind of thing overall. Strength today was good. It was a uh, bench day, warmed up, a little more of a pump, did a few extra things. Good groove with the training. I'm really happy with that. Um, and again, great training partner with Steph and when the other guys make it, it's a good good group of four or five of us that we push each other. Um, and it's fun. It's just, you know, we look around guys in the gym, but you know what? We're, we're fucking working hard and that's really, really cool. And the young guys are watching us, you know, and they can just see what's going on and, you know, they're, 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 they're starting to pay attention a little bit. So as the physiques change, you know, I'm sure they'll pay even more attention because everyone's always following this, the wonder program of the month, right? Oh, I got this program from this guy and I got this program from that guy, right? And I think it's great. Listen, follow something, change your routine every six weeks. Um, every routine promises to be the end all be all. And I was talking to a guy last night, he was showing me his new program. It was a Saturday or Thursday night at the gym. And he goes, what do you think? I go, dude, you really want to know how well it works? He goes, yeah. I said, take it before and after picture, measure your biceps, measure your chest, measure your legs. Pound that program as hard as you can for six weeks. Like own it. Every day walk in there and you have a job. Go to war. Get it done. And at the end of six weeks, take an after photo, take the measurements, and then look. What did you get out of it? What were the changes? Got to be honest, he didn't like that answer too much because the onus was put back on him. A lot of people want the shiny new supplement. They want the, you know, and I love supplements and they have a time and place. Everyone wants that special, oh, I just got this amazing workout from this guy. Sometimes we don't, most guys write workouts, don't even do them themselves. Um, you know, it's, it's like, that's, this is what I was missing. This, this is going to get me to the other side. But guys, you know, what's going to get you to the other side, hard effing work, warming up, getting in there, pumping out, getting a sweat, getting uncomfortable, forcing the body to make changes. That's the magic. If there's a magic bullet, that's the magic bullet. Right. But again, right. That requires a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency, a lot of ball busting effort, right. A lot of, you got to be uncomfortable. Right, because if you're not uncomfortable, if the body isn't forced to make changes, exactly, you're right, Steph. Intensity, intensity, intensity. You can take the basic program and make it as gut busting as you want. Like today, we went heavy on the bench, and then we did the triple drop. We did three fifteen for reps, racket, took a plate off right away into another set, racket, put it away, and went down to one thirty five. So Steph did it, I did it. I mean, I did six reps at three fifteen, and I went to twenty five for six reps. When I got to that one thirty five for ten, that ten was harder to do than the first two sets were, right? And then when I watched the video, it's weird because the bar speed never changed in all three sets, but it felt really, really hard. The last set of tricep push down, one-arm push downs, right? 10, 12 reps, and then drop the weight, 10, 12 reps immediately. Push blood, make it uncomfortable. You know what? When you're breathing and sweating out of a tricep exercise, you've got the right intensity going, right? At the end of the day, you guys got squatting that are squatting way too heavy, and you know what? If they did better form, better depth, and better intensity with one plate, they'll get better leg development and then go up from there, right? you got to work hard. Food, right? When we're trying to lose weight, you've got to feel hungry because you're making a change. If you're not in a deficit, you're not going to lose weight. And if you're in a deficit, you're going to feel hungry because it's a deficit. It's, it's less than what you're used to. So your body has to reset things. It's used to you having X amount of calories because that's what you normally eat. Right. So even cleaning up my food the way I did. Right. It made a big difference. And my body was getting used to it. So taking it from there and dropping it even further and even cleaner, it's going to take time for my body. Got to destroy properly the muscle fibers. That's right. We break down muscle tissue in the gym and it rebuilds outside the gym. when We rest and we re, uh, rehydrate and we refeed. Right. That's when the body makes its adaptation. It adapts to the stress. You're, Janet, you're absolutely right. Sore and hungry. Not crazy sore all the time and not crazy hungry, just a little stiff as a receipt from the workout, and a little hungry because you tighten things up. 
And at the end of the day, once you systemize that, right, you just say, hey, this is part of the process, right? Take a stimulant, you know, curb your appetite. There's a lot of ways around it, right? But at the end of the day, right, we're trying to make changes. So we have to be uncomfortable. We have to pay for the progress, right? We have to earn those results. We're going to pay for our sins. So if you got a lot of weight to lose, you're paying for your sins, man. You were living too well, right? Things were too good. You weren't in control. You weren't taking care of your body. That's the real truth about it. That's the real honesty about it, right? At the end of the day, I, I didn't have to be 395 pounds of bench over uh, on my way to 600 pounds. It's just I ate well and I trained hard, right? But at the end of the day, once I get down to this 240, I get down to the 10% or 245 or 235, whatever it ends up being, right? I want to switch back to powerlifting, but I'd like to bench 600 weighing less than 275, even more impressive than benching 600 at 395 pounds, right? But that's part of the goals. That's part of the chase, earning that shift. So this way on the other side, you're proud because you earned that. You made the changes. You did what you, you know, weren't even sure you could do. You did what others didn't think you could do. But I want you to do this one thing. When you guys are going through changes and transformations and you're working really hard and you get to the other side, I want you to remember the people that believe in you all along the way because those are far and few between and they're the gems they're the ones that were there for you my son is doing amazing job yes my son yes he deadlifted the 300 for triple there you know he's uh he's my son so i think he's awesome but you know he's a great athlete always has been my son and daughter uh 16 and almost 18 now my son's 18 They've been around the gym since they were little. I used to train in the garage. My buddies' monsters would come over and train with me. And the boys and the girl, the girl would just start counting reps. We taught them how to do kettlebells when they were five and six. We taught them how to do weights. Um, have I talked to him, Steph, into competing? One step at a time. He's just finishing his hockey career, right? He's in his last year of hockey. He's about to go off to university, but he's bitten by that power. Like, so, Braden, uh, very lean. So, my wife's side of the family is very lean. My side of the family, very muscular. So Braden's actually got, and my daughter too, they have the best genetics on both sides. So when Braden takes his shirt off, he's a 10% body fat. His pecs hang. He's got a nice six to eight pack, right? He's 150 pounds, but every ounce of him is in good shape. Um, so, you know, when he's deadlifting, he likes deadlifting. Um, he likes the physique stuff. And I really think he's at that point. He's coming to the Arnold Classic with us. So he's going to see that whole new world and stuff in Columbus at the end of the month. Um, He's a good-looking kid with a great body that if he's put some effort and time into it, he could do something really cool. And he, because he loves the sports and the physical activity, I think this is always something that's going to be good for him, that even if he doesn't play hockey, he'll have the gym and he'll have the physique part and stuff. But I think if I, if I just look at him and I look at my daughter, they've got great genetics. They could do some great physique things. You know, I want them to do it. I don't want to push them into it like anything else. Uh, they've grown up around it. They know how to do it. They're, they train better than most adults I know because we've been at it since they were little. And always focused on form and technique and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm trying to convince him to compete in April at the dead for just deadlift only. Uh, but he's, you know, he's finishing high school. He's got to deal with universities coming up and stuff. So I want him to even just to keep the weight to keep his head straight and keep himself healthy and stuff down the line. So, and my daughter too, she's got a lot of hockey going on. She gets called up a lot to play. Uh, school is important for her. And then she's got dyslexia. So she has to stay focused on her schoolwork. Uh, so when she can, she gets in the workout, but she as well is very strong on the deadlift, pound for pound of a 240 pound deadlift. And maybe she's 130 pounds and, you know, it's 16 years. And, you know, right now deadlifting once every six to eight weeks. So at the end of the day, lots of, lots of potential in those kids and stuff for sure. And I think as, as adults, if we can show that to our children, we're doing a lot for them, right? Because that's something they can have with them forever. Uh, I don't want my kids to deal with the weight issues that I've had and stuff. Uh, I don't think they will because of how we've raised them. Um, so they haven't had some of the mental issues I've had to deal with growing up. Uh, they have different self-esteem levels and different confidence levels uh, that we've nurtured in them as, as parents. So I think that's a big difference. But we've kept them active as well. So it's a way of life. We, were very, we are a very active family, that kind of thing. And each one of us has our physical thing that we're into. So powerlifting and baseball for my wife, uh, hockey for the kids and, and stuff like that. So it's a very big influence overall. So I'd love to see both of them, you know, keep the weights going and, and just get jacked and, and see where that goes overall. And, and listen, you know, like I said, with hockey, it's expensive, but it's still cheaper than bail. And the same thing, we can keep them in the gym and keep them healthy and keep them, you know, out of trouble. Then it's a great thing overall. And, you know, guys, it's the same for us, right? 
we're working out three, four times a week. John, I see videos. You're always coming back from the gym. You're working out at home. You know what I mean? Like you, you found a way to really fill uh, voids in your life or times in your life with very positive things. You're not the same woman I met two years ago. I said that before, right? You have a better smile. You're happier. Your confidence, right? How you feel about yourself, I can tell, has dramatically changed. That's wonderful, right? And that's really what I wish for everybody including myself, including the people that are part of the hostile family and stuff. And, and anyone I run into, I want them to be healthier. I want to, and I want to see if I can help them. Obviously that's part of my thing. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's so valuable. I was telling Steph today, only with the 40 some pounds on, I feel better than I've ever felt. I can remember feeling in a long time. I can just imagine 40 more pounds from now, whether I'm hungry or not, what that's going to look like, what that's going to feel like. Right. What those days are going to feel. And I, I, I can't help but wish that for people that are looking for that. Right. So to me, uh, <clears throat> exciting times. Thanks, Jan. Some changes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You know, I'm a pretty positive guy, but my, my headspace is getting better and better all the time, which is good because the brand is growing. There's more stresses. There's different stresses. So I need to be a better version of myself all the time overall. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. And it's great to have good people. Uh, you know, acknowledge that and, you know, and tell me you're proud of me, it makes me feel good. I, 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 it means something to me for sure, for sure. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we want good people. We want to be with good people. We want good things for ourselves, but we want to have that for our people around us as well overall. So uh, tomorrow I am going to upload my unboxing of that uh, Renfo bodyweight scale from the Amazons. So you guys can check that out. And it's complete with an actual curtain in his underwear weighing in. So uh, avert your eyes, children, if you're a little concerned about that. And uh, so you can see, and again, I just, you know, I thought it was really cool. And even for myself, when I was setting it up, it was a little unclear with some of the instructions. I looked on YouTube and there wasn't a video for it. So I kind of said, hey, I'll do a little video and help people out with it. But probably the, the smartest 40 bucks I've spent in a long time, including delivery. So it's hard to beat that. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thanks for the likes. Thanks for the subscribes and stuff. Our, our uh, subscriber base is growing slowly but surely, which is important overall. If there's something you want me to cover, send me a message, kurthoss at gmail.com. Uh, let me know what it is, and I'll uh, I'll do some information on it on an upcoming video, that kind of thing. If anything I can do to help you guys with your journeys, don't be shy. Let me know. All right, guys? I'll talk to you guys later.